I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. Uh, welcome to our first hands-on, without touching, uh, Zoom technical meet. And what we're going to do today, instead of being super vehicle specific, we're going to be talking about basic electrical concepts and testing. Uh, I uh, just wanted to make a statement when you were uh, testing for the light bulb and that sort of thing with low voltages and low current. You, uh, be careful that you don't complete the circuit. You're intending for Somebody's the circuit trying. to go through the wires, but sometimes you yourself can bypass the wires. I was just mentioning the fact that you're intending for the, the current to flow through the wire to the part, but if you are touching the part and the wire, you can complete the circuit instead, and it will go through you to the part and give you a false reading. So be Absolutely. careful where you put your hand. Yes, I, I agree. And I showed people that when I used the ohm meter and I touched both leads, that wire, juice will go through me. Okay. And yeah, and one area of particular caution you should always practice is on an ignition system, you have a primary side, which is battery or system voltage, and you have a secondary side. Now that is no longer 12 or 13 volts or 14 volts. That gets up into the 40,000 volt range or higher, and that is done through inductive amplification, whatever you want to call it, and that goes to your spark plugs. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the nice thing about that voltage is it's much lower current, super low current, okay? So if you think about this, this battery, it's rated at, if this were fully charged, it has CCA 710. So, right, 710 amps will kill me, okay? But it's only 12 volts, and that's why it's not killing me. Now, if you get into the 40,000 volt range and you put 700 amps through, you're going to burn a building down. Uh, most... I think my fuse panel for this building is 200 amps max, maybe 300. Uh, so the current is essential. That's how much water is flowing. So if all those electrons go through my body, it's like, like a lightning strike, phew, you're, you're torched. So on an ignition system, one thing you got to watch out, if you're playing around those spark plug wires, you can get a zap. And it's enough of a zap to scare the heck out of you. And I've done that before. And in fact, one time I was checking a car while it was running and there was a, I could hear a tap, 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 you know, like an electrical arc. And I was moving spark plug wires around and I was trying not to touch the car. So you're safe if you're not touching the car because you won't complete that circuit. But if you are touching the car in any way, and remember the ignition system has the high voltage and it's high voltage, so it jumps the spark plug gap. It's made, designed to jump that gap so it ignites the fuel mixture, okay? So my mistake on that is I was touching a wire that was actually going through me, is I got my torso a little too close to the car, and I actually saw a spark come from my crotch area and go to the car, and I wanna let you know that that scared the hell out of me, uh, pardon my language, but. That's why it's very important to be careful around ignition systems when a car is running. When it's not running, it's not nothing to worry about. All right, any other questions? Yeah, Ronnie, um, Rich says, this is more specific to my 69 Silver Shadow. My reverse lights do not work. Where would you suggest I start checking the voltage? Okay, well, that's a great question. So. The reverse flights don't work. So if you really want to get serious about this, well, for, first thing I would do always is remove the bulbs and check the bulbs. You can check the bulbs with a, on the ohm setting. You should have uh, you should have continuity. In other words, it should have a reading. And depending on the wattage of the bulb, you'll have different readings. So if that's good, then your then your next step is to go to the socket that the bulb goes into. And most light bulbs on cars, they have the little terminal, the little isolated terminal there, and then they have the housing. And on most light bulbs on a car, negative ground, 
this will be the positive feed and this will be grounded to the body. So the best way to check both is I will take like a screwdriver or some pick or whatever, this end without touching the sides to that part that touches this little piece here and then touch the outside that touches this and see if your test light lights up. Or you can do it with a voltmeter if you want to. You can check the two. If the test light lights up, then, then you've got a problem with your bulb connection or the bulb. If you don't have a voltage feed to the center piece of this, then you have to check your wiring diagram. And I say wiring diagram because that could relate to anything electrical on the car. You want to check the wiring diagram first. Now, I happen to know that on this car, or those cars, the, there is going to be a switch that turns on the reverse lights when you go into reverse. Okay, And on like, like on an old stick shift car, which is not a shadow, there is a switch on the transmission. On a shadow, there is a little micro switch in the gear selector housing by the steering wheel. There's a plastic cover. One of those micro switches is for the reverse light. Okay, so then, since that's not too hard to access, if you do not have voltage to that wire or that, that part of the socket at the reverse light assembly, then you go to the micro switch and the steering column. And then you check with your test light uh, if you're getting voltage to the switch, there should be two terminals. And if you're not getting voltage to, to the switch, then you have to go to your wiring diagram and see where it gets a voltage feed. If you are getting voltage to the switch, you see if you're getting voltage out of the switch. So really it doesn't matter which one you check, so long as you're getting voltage to it, you go to the output and it's not working, you have to figure out why that is. Now on a micro switch, you gotta make sure that the little switch part is being depressed. Usually there's a little button that has to go in to make it make contact. And if that is not being activated, there's your problem, more than likely. But in reverse, voltage to both sides of the switch right out of the gate, then you gotta check the circuit from the output from that micro switch to your bulbs. Now, 69 shadow, I don't remember if that has, does it have the reverse lights in the trunk, but in the tail? Either way, you're gonna to have to check the wiring in between where the trunk opens and closes. There's a harness. If it's in, in the tail lights, like on the 76, and you, you're not getting voltage to it, then uh, you might have to check the wiring on that. Uh, a lot of times it's just a loose bulb holder. In the, there's just so many things it can be. Any other questions? Uh, Richard, uh, quick question for you. What are the most common electrical problems you see on spirits and spurs? Uh, depends on the year range. The most common, I would say, is window problems. Typically are due to a drop in voltage. And as I mentioned earlier, the, all the wiring to all the windows is kind of fed through the master switch. The master switch is the driver's door switch. Whether it's right or left hand right, doesn't matter. It has the four switches. There are a bunch of little micro switches in there, and those are typically where the problem starts. So if your windows are intermittent, a lot of times it's a switch. Now, the micro switches on the windows on the Spirits and Spurs are a three-wire micro switch. So you're gonna have a feed. What it does is it reverses the, the current. They switch the polarity wire that is the ground feed for all the switches. You got one wire is a positive feed for all the switches and the switches alternate between connected and unconnected. So the normally closed contacts will feed your, I believe your ground at all times. And then when you activate the switch, it fires up the voltage side on, and then it alternates. So that's where most of the problems, the most electrical problems on the spirits and spurs that I find are, are window problems. Now there's other issues that happen over time the windows will get slower or will be slow one direction or the other. Those mechanical issues and voltage drop issues. Uh, and, uh, but anyways, as far as electrical, it's usually the micro switches that cause that.